Hello, my name is Devanj Bhatt, and with my partner, Charles Tan, we will be discussing the article about Sure Independent Screening for Ultra High Dimensional Feature Space by Jian King Fan and Jin Chi Liv. To start off, we will give you a brief introduction to high dimensional data and the problems such data brings. When the dimension of any data set is high, the number of predictors is significantly greater than the sample size. It is often assumed that not all the predictors in the feature space impact the response. This is why variable selection is especially important because it effectively retains a subset of variables that help predict the response with the least error while discarding the rest. This not only leads to improved computation time, but also enhances the model's interpretability with regards to parsimonious representation. Sparsity of data is a concern in many fields relating to genetic biology, electrical engineering, and financial analysis, where the sample size is usually significantly smaller than the number of predictors. In such fields, variable selection plays an important role in creating models. There are many existing solutions for dimensionality reduction, such as the Danzig selector, adaptive lasso, SCAD, bridging regression, and many more, which all work best when the sample size n is greater than the number of predictors p. A concept that we want to address is known as the oracle property, which knows the true subset of predictors in the model and also estimates parameters efficiently. However, with the existing methods of dimension reduction, they are very poor at predicting the oracle with a sparse data set when p is significantly greater than n, which leads us to our main topic of sure independent screening. The fundamental premise of this article, sure independent screening, or SIS, is a broader variation of correlation learning, which ranks the importance of features according to their marginal correlation with the response variable, and uses the d highest ranked predictors to create the final model. SIS is applicable to generalized linear models, classification problems under various loss functions, and non-parametric learning under sparse additive models. The overall cost of SIS is that of multiplying a p by n matrix by an n vector plus obtaining the largest d components of a p vector, so the overall computational complexity is O of n p. The reason why the term is coined sure screening is because it ensures that the important variables quote unquote survive the variable screening process with this probability tending to 1. The original problem of estimating the sparse p vector beta in a model reduces to estimating a d vector of beta. Here we want d to be strictly less than n. The smaller subset can then be combined with a well-developed lower dimensional method such as SCAD or adaptive lasso or the Danzig selector. So now you must be wondering that this sounds great for predicting the response from a high dimensional data, but how does it work? Well, to start out, we have an n vector for our response y and a n by p matrix for the variable x. For the sake of simplicity, we will assume that all the data is centered by subtracting it from the mean. Then we create models by regressing y over each xb individually. Then we find the correlation coefficients of each model. For demonstration purposes, we use the Pearson correlation coefficient r. At this point, you will have p correlation coefficients. You will then rank them by taking their absolute values to obtain the d largest correlation coefficients. Here you want d to be less than n. Now you have reduced x from a n by p matrix down to a n by d matrix by using sure independent screening. Now you can choose from the many low dimensional methods discussed earlier to reduce the parameter space further. We have taken a few simulations from the article to help you understand the advantages of sure independent screening. For the first simulation, the authors used the linear model with IID standard Gaussian predictors and Gaussian noise with standard deviation of 1.5. 
The first model has n is equal to 200 and p is equal to 1000 as its parameter space. The second model has n is equal to 800 and p is equal to 2000 as its parameter space. Sizes of the true models were chosen to be 8 and 18 respectively. They simulated 200 data sets for each simulation. Amongst the different variations of SIS, we chose SysGAD and SysDanzig selector. For the SysGAD and SysDS methods, they chose D is equal to N divided by log N. And for the last two methods, they chose D to be equal to N minus one and D prime to be equal to N divided by log N. And in the middle step, the Danzig selector was used to reduce the model size further from D to D prime by choosing variables with the D prime largest component wise magnitudes of the estimated D vector. You will notice four missing entries on both the tables presented because of the limited computing resources. For each of the above six methods presented in the two tables, the results are shown as the median of the selected model sizes and the median of the estimation errors. You will notice that the best simulation results are presented by using a combination of SIS and SCAD together. It can also be concluded that SIS, in combination with the Danzig selector and another method, reduce estimation errors as compared to using only SIS and the Danzig selector. For the second simulation, predictors are now correlated with each other. We considered three models where the first one had n is equal to 200, p is equal to 1000, and s equals to 5. The second model has n is equal to 200, p is equal to 1000, and s is equal to 8 as its parameter space. And the third model had n is equal to 800, p is equal to 20,000, and s is equal to 14. Here, S is the size of the true model. For this simulation, we can conclude the same as simulation one. That is, the combination of SIS followed by SCAD is the most powerful tool to reduce the parameter space and get a low estimation error. So despite the numerous benefits of carrying out SIS, it does have some pitfalls. The first problem is that some irrelevant predictors that are strongly correlated with important predictors may have a higher priority in being selected by SAS over important predictors that have a weaker association to the response. Second, an important predictor that is marginally uncorrelated with other variables but jointly correlated with the response cannot be chosen by SIS and hence will never be utilized in the final model. Third, executing SIS brings about the issue of collinearity between predictors, which increases the difficulty of the variable selection problem. In summary, when we have the best case scenario, where the model assumptions are satisfied and these three issues are excluded, SIS can accurately reduce dimensionality from ultra high to a moderate scale, say below the sample size. Although this is unrealistic. When the assumptions fail, SIS will inevitably miss important predictors. To counteract this issue, the authors propose Iterative Sure Independent Screening, or ISIS, which is an iterative variation of SIS. The process of iterative sure independent screening is as follows. The first step is we select a subset of K1 variables, that is X1, X2, all the way to X1, K1 using an SIS based model selection method, such as SIS SCAD or SIS LASSO. As a result of doing this, we will have an N vector of the residuals from regressing the response Y over XI1 to XIK1. In the next step, we treat those residuals as the new responses and apply the same method as in the previous step to the remaining p minus k1 variables, which results in a subset of k2 variables denoted as xj1 to xjk2. Note that the whole purpose of doing this is to fit the residuals from the previous step on x1 to xp, which minimizes the first problem of SIS outlined above, wherein unimportant variables are being chosen as a result of their strong associations with the important predictors xi1 to xik1. Subsequently, 
This is especially convenient because it also enables important predictors to survive the screening process, and hence resolves SIS's second issue with regards to important predictors not making it to the final model. We can keep on doing this until we get L disjoint subsets A1 to AL whose union has size D, which is less than the sample size N. Before I delve into the following simulations as shown on screen, I would like to provide some context on where these simulations are originally based from. When given a simple linear model, such as y equals 5x1 plus 5x2 plus 5x3 plus epsilon, the goal was to test the abilities of SIS, LASSO, and ISIS with their estimated probabilities of including the necessary variables x1, x2, and x3 into the true model. It is important to keep in mind that a large correlation, a large row value, has an extremely huge impact especially in high dimensionality, and hence, LASSO outperforms SIS because of this. Ultimately, we learn that ISIS easily overcomes both SIS and LASSO, as ISIS always picks the true variables. This will be verified next. Let us examine the two simulation results in front of us, which clearly depict the strengths of ISIS. The simulation result on the left involving an extended linear model given as y equals 5x1 plus 5x2 plus 5x3 minus 15 square root of rho x4 plus epsilon, where rho is fixed and the unique variable x4 is now added, where it has a correlation square root of p with all previous variables x1 to x3. This addition of x4 with this correlation constraint makes it so that SIS does not pick up the true model by chance, but instead with utter certainty. In this simulation, 200 data sets were simulated for each model, and we can see that SIS slightly outperforms LASSO, while ISIS consistently picks all the true variables with a guaranteed probability 1. Now let's take a look at the simulation results on the right. The same setup was implemented as the previous simulation, except the new linear model includes the addition of a new variable x5. This variable is uncorrelated with every other variable. The reason for attaching x5 was to introduce a variable that possesses an extremely low contribution to the response, an effect comparable to the noise variable, epsilon, and hence would be harder to pick up by the aforementioned models. Again, 200 datasets were simulated for each model, providing us with this resulting table, and yet again, ISIS was capable of picking up both variables x4 and x5, which is a true testament to its capabilities as it tackles not only the second, but also the third problem relating to collinearity of predictors, brought about by the original SIS model. We hope you learned some valuable information about sure independent screening. Thank you for listening to this presentation.